I sprayed that and it was literally like, oh Lord, like why are you attacking me? So hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So we have another favorites video today and I, y'all, I swear to God, these products are my favorites. I'm not just picking up a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna have to show you guys my makeup collection so you know how much stuff I have to choose from. I'm not saying that to brag or anything like that, but it's just when I pull out five foundations and I can't get rid of one, those are my favorites. And I probably have close to like 40 foundations, 50, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna go over my favorites. I have them in a box. Today we are doing foundation, concealer, primer, setting spray, under eye powder, and face powder. So. We got a little bit of like mostly complexion products. I'm not gonna keep you guys waiting, trying to explain all this before we get into the video. If you're new here, I'd love to have you join the family. So please click that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. If you wanna see my 2020 favorites that are pretty much complexion, stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, we're gonna start off with primer. The first product that I have is this primer oil. I have used this, you guys heard me talking about it. This is the Milani Prep and Brighten Rose Face Oil. This is what the bottle looks like. I absolutely love it. You see, I just got this probably a few months ago and I use it every single time I do my makeup. If I'm not doing my makeup, then I'll use a different face oil, but this one says it is good for makeup prep and I feel like it sinks into the skin really well so I don't have any issues when I wear it under my makeup with it making things slip around or having my foundation not set or anything like that. So love this. You've seen it in quite a few videos and if you don't see it nine times out of ten I'm using it behind the scenes. The next primer I have these two putty primers actually. I'm putting both of them because high end, low end option. The first one is this Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. I've had this forever. It says this is only good for 12 months. Y'all, I'm still using it. But this has a dent in it. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I pull it back here. Yeah, like she is hollowed out. And I have a backup. I love this for putting in this area here and on my nose and then also on my forehead to kind of help smooth things out. I think it my makeup applies very well over it. I don't have any issues. You have to kind of go in with a light hand because it can peel up on you like start getting the little balls and flaking around. So you don't want that, but absolutely love this. If you have an issue with pores or texture, it helps smooth it out. We know Tarte came out with their poreless putty primer. I do feel like this is not as creamy as my Tarte one, but it still works the same way. A lot of people compare this to the Tatcha canvas. I have not tried that yet. I do have a small sample size of it, but I just haven't gotten around to using it yet. I have this one in the luminous version and this one, which is just the original. There is also a matte. So if you're looking for something to help smooth out your complexion, pore filling, definitely give this one a try. I wanted to include it because it's a low end option and this one is actually in my travel bag. So you know it's good if it goes with me out of town. I also wanted to include this Becca Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer because it is a primer and I have been using this pretty much every time I do my makeup. It is green and the thing I love about it most is when I put it on under my eyes, I feel like it helps to smooth everything out, but I also feel like it helps to depuff because there is something in here. I am not sure what, I'll put it up on the screen if I can figure out what ingredient it is, but it actually helps cool. Like I feel a cooling sensation on my face. So if you don't know, whenever you're using cooling products, it helps to depuff. And I just feel like this helps to do that before I put my makeup on. So I love it. Okay, you guys, for face primers, I, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't decide. So we're just gonna go through it real quick because these are just regular primers. The first one, we already knew this was coming. This is my Becca Skin Love Brighten and Blur Primer. I use this pretty much every time I do my makeup. 
when I'm on camera, I tell you guys I'm using this, especially for wear tests, because I wear it so often and I know it works well. So if I want something that is gonna be like, okay, I'm comparing this foundation to another foundation, this is the standard. It goes on top, any foundation goes on top of this one in a wear test. When I was not as dry, I was using this Cover FX Gripping Primer. When I first started my channel, this is all I talked about. It is still a favorite, but because of the dryness and feeling like my pores and my wrinkles are more accentuated, I am looking for something that is more blurring. Now, I will use this one and put my Tarte Primer or my e.l.f. Primer on top of it to help smooth, but I just love how this one helps to firm. It's gripping and firming, and I love how it just, it kind of gives your skin, it does say it gives like that glass-like finish, and it is long wearing. So it's a different kind of texture. If you've used the Hydro Grip, it is similar to that. I do think that it helps my makeup stay on longer, but it doesn't help as much with the pore filling as the Becca one does. So that's why I've been gravitating towards that one more, but I still love this. It does help your makeup last. So if you don't have texture issues and you want a good gripping primer, try this one out. This next one I have is this Beauty Bakery Butter Primer. Y'all, I wore this one when I first tried out Beauty Bakery and I loved how smooth it made my face feel. It literally feels like you're putting butter on your face. And when you put your foundation on top of it, it just glides over it. It still gives you coverage. It's not like it's just gliding and wiping away, but it is just something about this. I love the applicator and I do love that it's more kind of like a balmy texture. It just, oh, it, like my skin just looks so blurred right there. You see how it looks like it has like a little film over it? This honestly kind of reminds me of the Tarte one. It's just not as thick. This does have antioxidants in it. If you want something that's gonna help hydrate and smooth out your texture, give this a try. I absolutely love it. I did get it on sale on Beauty Bakery's website, so be on the lookout for sales all the time. This next one is the Tula Probiotics and Superfood Face Filter Blurring and Moisturizing. As you can tell, there is a theme here. We need to blur and we need to moisturize. So I got this as a sample and then I used it a few times and then I turned around and immediately went and bought a full size of it. It's not really pore filling per se, but it kind of just smooths everything out and I do notice that it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Like it just helps give a glow. And I love products like that under my foundation. Products like these, I feel like I can still wear some of my natural finish or even some of my matte ones and they won't look completely dry on my face. So love this primer. This last one is a drugstore option. I had to give you guys one. This is the Revlon Photo, Prime, Photo Ready Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Makeup and Skincare. This one does help to hydrate. It does have B5 and hyaluronic acid in it. And I picked this one up because Nakia Joy said it was very similar to the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas and I did not wanna pay $52 for that. So I paid $12 for this. I like this primer a lot. It is one of my favorites because I feel like it goes on smooth. All of these are smoothing. That is what I'm looking for, smoothing and hydrating. I do like that I do also feel like this kind of just helps blur everything out the same as everything else I've talked about and it helps your makeup last longer. Now we are going to move on to foundations. I have drugstore and high-end options. The first one I picked up during the 21 Days of Beauty sale at Ulta. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. This, I love how this looks on my skin. It is not as long wearing as some of my more matte foundations, but I love this one for if I want a glam look and it's like I'm going out for a few hours, I don't need this to last all day. I have worn it all day and it lasts, but I do notice that it transfers a little more. So if I'm looking for something more long wearing, I will go with a more matte finish, but I love how this looks on the skin, absolute favorite. The next one is actually very similar and I remember people were comparing it to this foundation, comparing it to the Anastasia. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. These bottles 
they look almost identical. So as you can see, shades are very similar. I will say that I like the shade of the NARS one a little bit better because it is a little more red neutral versus I feel like this one's a little more golden, but I can make both of them work. I do also feel that the NARS lasts longer. So it's a radiant, natural radiant finish doesn't dry down to look super matte and accentuate any of my wrinkles or my pores, but it lasts long. So this one, if I want to wear something that's going to last a little longer, I gravitate towards this one. Beautiful finish, full coverage, love it. The next one, I just recently did a video on this and told you guys this is one of my top threes. And guess what? This is my last high-end favorite. This is the Il Maquillage Woke Up Like This foundation. This foundation is a little more matte, so I have to do a little more prep with my skin when I wear it. But when I tell you last all day, go watch my wear test. I wore it in the gym. It stayed on. I had a mask on. Stop letting people lie to you. There is no such thing as completely transfer free. Your mask will stay white or whatever color it is. If you wear a mask for a long period of time and you have to talk and it is rubbing on your face, there's gonna be some transfer, that's just real life. But there are some foundations that can hold up a little better under those conditions. This is one of them, so if you haven't tried it, I'm in the shade 200. I haven't told you all the shades. Anastasia Beverly Hills, I am in the shade 480C. NARS, I'm in medium 3.3, medium dark 3.3 Caracas. Sorry about that. So. Love this foundation. I've had friends who have bought it since I did my video and they love it as well. The next three options are drugstore. There's no way I could do a video about foundation and not talk about this one. This is the Hard Candy Glamouflage Full Coverage Foundation, 16 hour wear. I am in the shade 1517 Mocha. This is what this looks like. I told y'all I got about this whenever I first started my channel. Told you it was a favorite. It is in my travel bag and I have a backup that stays on top of my vanity. This one's just super matte. Super long wearing, but super matte. So I haven't been wearing it as much, but if I prep my face, use my face oil, use a good moisturizer, I can pull this one off. So love it. There aren't a lot of shades, but if you can find yours, please try it out. The next is this Milani Screen Queen Foundation. I'm in the shade 500 Natural Toffee. This says it has a luminous natural finish. It says light to medium coverage, but I built this up really well to like medium, medium full coverage. So I don't know why it says that because she is thick for a light. I don't know. I don't know what light coverage. This does also say that it has a digital blue light filter. I don't know about that. I mean, maybe, but I love how this looks. I love how it applies. I love how it blends out and it wears really well, really long. So definitely get your hands on this one. This last one, I did a full wear test and video on this one. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. Mine is in the shade Dark 170N. This one is a little too dark for me right now, but y'all know if it's dark, I'll drag my concealer all over my face a little bit, blend it out, and we are fine. I love this foundation. I love the wear of it. I love all of them. They're pretty much all the same. I want something that is a little more hydrating. Your girl's about to be 40. We can't be acting like I'm in my 20s anymore with problematic, acne-prone, oily skin. So my needs have changed. My foundation preferences have changed. I love this foundation. It runs, I think it's like $12 or $13, something like that. But ColourPop always has a sale. Get it on their website, go find your shade at Ulta, and then buy it on ColourPop's website for sale. You're welcome. For my concealers, I do have my one color corrector. I've tried the e.l.f., the stick color corrector, and I started noticing that I felt like it kind of just wore off. Like once I start blending it out, a lot of it blends away. But this LA Girl Pro Conceal High Definition Concealer, this is in the shade Orange Corrector. This is a newer tube, and then I also have a tube that I'm almost done with. I'm probably always just going to go with this one. I did recently purchase the Black Radiance one, so I'm going to let you guys know how that one wears compared to this. 
but I think this one is probably gonna even be cheaper. My other concealers I have, I have one drugstore, three high-end. The first, I'll go with the drugstore. This is the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. I have several shades in this. I love that they also came out with a hydrating version and I have been using that one more because I need hydration. But if I prep my skin really well and I want something that's gonna last longer, I will use the original one. This one is in the shade Tan Latte. It is super light for me, but I would use this one under my eyes. And then I also have other shades to use on my face. The other three I have are all high-end and these are just using for under my eyes for concealer. Of course, my Pat McGrath. I love this foundation. This is probably my number one. I can say it's my number one. I did buy the wrong shade. I bought M20 and it was just way too yellow. This shade is the shade for under my eyes. This is M17. I also found the Kylie Skin Concealer and I feel like it is very, all three of these are very similar. The Kylie Skin Concealer, this is in the shade Sesame. I love how bright this makes my under eyes look and I love how smooth everything looks. Super full coverage. You can use a little bit and sheer it out or look baby my eyes like well, i did my eyes with this my under eyes with this and i was just like i don't remember my under eyes looking this smooth i don't know i don't know what it was about it but i had a very good makeup day when i used this and i fell in love with it this last one is the boing cakeless concealer by benefit i'm in the shade number eight i fell in love with this one the first time i used it too like i feel like all of these are so similar that I could use either one of them on any day and know I'm gonna have an amazing makeup day. The shades, it's crazy because they all look very different. So I don't know if you can see that. The Kylie one looks a little more pink. This is the Pat McGrath, it looks a little more yellow. And then this one looks a little more neutral. And I just feel like they all almost wear the same. Now we're moving on to face powders. I have three in a compact and then the rest are loose. So this, I have almost hit pan. I've hit pan and I'm scrubbing around the edges. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder and this is the darkest shade they have, 828C Cocoa. This is very sheer, like very, very sheer. So I pretty much just use this if I wanna adjust the tone of something that I'm wearing or I will use it to contour my nose. That's actually my favorite way to use this. It doesn't have a lot of coverage, so it's not like a super harsh line when I use it, but I love the finish of it. It reminds me a lot of my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish. This one is in the shade Dark Golden. I have another one in a different shade. I don't know what it is, but we all know what MAC Mineralize Skin Finishes look like. They just help your skin look airbrushed. And when these wet and wild ones came out, people were comparing them. So these do come in different shades. This is just the darkest that this one comes in. And since I already had my face shade for this one, I picked the darker one to kind of see if I could contour with it or bronze. And I can a little bit, but like I said, I use it mostly for my nose. This last one, I waited and waited and waited because it went out of stock for a while. This is the Pat McGrath Medium Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I got the shade Medium because I like using it under my eye and I didn't want to get the dark one that was going to make my concealer look darker. So this one, I hate how powdery this is because you dip your brush in here and it is just immediately like so much kickback. But as you can see, that little bit I swatched on my hand, like there's some coverage to it, but it definitely blurs. It is so smoothing, so expensive, but so pretty. So I make sure that I use a really light hand when I use it because this will just dissipate into the air and then I'm running out and need another one. If I'm using a loose powder, I have four options, two drugstore, two high end. This Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the shade 35 Deep. You guys have seen me use this all over my face too many times to count, so there was no way I could not include this. I love this one because I like the shade of it. It's kind of light and it's more of a neutral. So if my foundation shade is a little too orange or I feel like it's a little too dark, 
or sometimes even a little too light. I can just brush this over my face and help adjust the color. Or if I'm using a luminous foundation and I need to set it because it doesn't set by itself and it still feels wet, I can put that over it and you still see the luminosity, but it helps everything to set and kind of gives you an airbrush look. The next two or three actually are all, if I'm setting my under eye and I'm baking, this Black Radiance True Complexion Loose Setting Powder. This is in the shade Banana. Yes, Banana. I love this one to set under my eyes and bake. I can let this sit. It is very finely milled and it is not going to disturb my concealer. This one I can use for baking and when I go to wipe it off, everything is just smooth and blurred and beautiful. These other two are the Nakia Joy, her Velvet Finishing Powder. I bought this one to use when I was oily. This one is just translucent. I love this powder. It smells good. I love it, especially when I was oily because I could put it in this area and bake with it and it would help my foundation stay and not get as oily and break up throughout the day. Now I don't bake with it as much, but I will still set my under eye with it and it just makes my pores look so blurred and everything just looks so beautiful and it doesn't, it's translucent even though it looks white. It'll help brighten a little bit, but it's not gonna be stark white, no flashback. This last one is a cult favorite. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I do have just the regular original translucent and then I just recently picked up the honey. This one is, I was worried because of how yellow it looks. But when I put it on my face, it is still the same brightening as the um, Nakia Joy Cosmetics and also as the regular translucent one, which is more of a beige. But this is very flattering. I didn't think I was, I love the formula. That's why it's in my favorites, but I didn't think I was gonna like this shade and I do. So Laura Mercier Translucent, whatever shade you need, the formula is amazing. Two more products because I wanted to finish with setting sprays. The first, when I have so many setting sprays and I always go back to these two and that's why I know they're my favorites. The first is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. This is just like the original Continuous Setting Mist. I love the mister. It doesn't leave big drops on your face. It's not hard, it's continuous. So you spray and it just keeps going. I ain't about to waste it. Put my face in it. I love this one. I love the smell and I love just how fine it is. I feel like it helps set everything, takes the powdery look away. I don't know about makeup longevity, but I just like how it makes my face look after I finish my makeup to spray it with that and let it sit and just have everything melt together. Last but not least, we have the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. I mentioned this to you guys recently because I told you I had stopped using it because I thought it was mattifying and it's not. So I probably have eight bottles of this. I always wore this when my face was oily. I would actually spray the D Slick and then go over it with this one. And now I just use this one. I've started using it again. I remember why I loved it so much. It does help with the longevity of your makeup. And I love the smell of it. This also has a fine sprayer. It's harder than the aerosol one, but it's still just, it's not spitting big drops at you. Y'all have seen <laughs> how I am about that, especially with the Milani Make It Last. I sprayed that and it was literally like, oh Lord, like why are you attacking me? So yeah, if it's aggressive, I don't want it going towards my face. That's just it. So that is it guys for my complexion products that were my favorites for 2020. Comment below and let me know if any of these are favorite products that you love or let me know something that I need to try out that you love. I cannot wait to finish rounding up my favorites. I'm letting y'all know now that my eyeshadows has to be by itself. It just does because it's gonna take some time. I'm gonna do eye primer and eyeshadows in a video by itself. But I think we might have only one or two more favorite videos left. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all, but we're almost done. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please stay. I would love to have you join the family. So hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.